Welcome to the Dwig America podcast. And now your host, Todd Dwiggins. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter when you're listening. Hello, and welcome to the Dwig America podcast. I am your host, Todd Dwiggins. So on today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about some of my some of my personal quirks, some of the things that uh, kind of make me who I am, make me tick, so to speak. But before I get started, just want to say my thoughts and prayers are with those on the East Coast and the Carolinas and Virginia, the whole Southeast that are dealing with uh, Hurricane Florence. Hopefully it is not as bad as they predicted. It looks like it has gone down to a Category 1 when I have done this podcast. So hopefully it uh, is not nearly as bad as was forecast and predicted. Speaking of which, it's raining here today, here in Central Texas, and it's raining harder than it did during Hurricane Harvey. We are on the very, very outer bands of Hurricane Harvey, and it really didn't rain that much, and it never really got that windy here. So I think it's strange, because when it rains here in Texas, it like downpours, and it's hard to drive in. So we would get some of those bands like that where I grew up in Indiana, but we would tend to have more of a long, steady rain. And here it just dumps and stops. Dumps and stops. So it's kind of odd. So what are my personal quirks? What are some of the things that make me a little different than everybody else? Because I think I am, as I look around, I'm really a quirky guy. So number one, I don't like to go to the movies. Now, I'll go see some. I went to see, like, the new Star Wars, and I went to see Harry Potter, and some of those. But generally speaking, I don't go to the movies. It's hard to get me to go to the movies. It's hard for me to sit in a theater knowing that I'm there for two hours, and if the movie stinks, I'm going to get stuck for two hours in a dark room. Now, luckily... I know that now they have theaters with the reclining seats, the theater seats where you can recline, whatever. That makes it more likely for me to go because I did go to one movie. It was a uh, kid's movie and the kids enjoyed it, but I had no interest. It, It lost my, it lost my interest really quickly. And so with the recliner, I closed my eyes and I basically slept through it. But I prefer not to spend 8 or 10, 12, whatever bucks it is to go to a movie for a nap when I can nap at home. But I just, most movies aren't that good. And I like good stories. So if a movie has a good story, I'm in. In fact, sometime I will do maybe my top five movies that I enjoy. Because I'm not saying I don't enjoy movies at all, but I just find most of them are kind of a waste of my time. I can watch them on Redbox or, you know, some other, some other thing. I can rent them or watch them at someone else's house, borrow them, whatever. But most movies I just don't enjoy. I've never enjoyed movies since I was a young kid. So, but I'll do someday. I'll do my top five movies because like I said, I do like movies, some movies. All right. That's one of my quirks. Number two, quirk. I don't know if this is a quirk or just sort of a, I don't know if I'm a contrarian, whatever, but I don't believe teenagers, even through high school, in fact, if it was up to me, if I was a lawmaker and I wanted to make a real difference in this world, I would ban smartphones for kids under the age of 18, maybe even under the age of 21, but probably under the age of 18. It's as bad as any drug. And as an adult, it's something I struggle with. Getting on the phone, looking for... Anytime someone has a question, bam, I'll Google it on the phone. I'll look at the phone, the phone, the weather, phone, everything, phone, phone, phone. And I find that it... it, it I can see why kids get depressed and anxious. There's something about phones I think is negative. So... My uh, my daughters have flip phones, 
so that if they need to get a hold of us, they can. But we all survived growing up without phones in the car with us at all times. I get it. It can be a safety thing, but if my uh, if my kids really need to get a hold of me, they do have a flip phone. So that's another one of my things. Not a movie guy. Not a flip phone guy. Or not a not a smartphone guy. Sorry. Um, that's just me. I'm not judging you if you think otherwise. But I'm just saying, for me, for my house, no. I just don't think smartphones are a good idea. All right, quirk number three. Okay, let me say first and foremost, I like sports. I enjoy sports. I like to know what's going on in sports, whether it's baseball, football, auto racing, hockey, to a lesser extent, NBA basketball and college basketball is probably my least favorite. But anyway, I enjoy knowing what's going on. I enjoy following a team for each sport. My quirk is, or issue is, when I see all around that it becomes so important to people that they will miss or schedule life events around a sport or a sporting event. Hey, sorry, I can't come to the uh, family get-together or whatever. My team's playing that day. So, record it. Who cares? It's a game. When you start putting sports, sporting events, above Almost anything else, that's weird to me. That's just bizarre. And I grew up loving sports. But anymore, I can't sit three hours or whatever it is for, I don't care how much, unless the game really means something like a championship game or playoffs. I mean, I'll watch some of it, but I'm not going to sit and watch hours and hours and hours on end. I'm not a fuddy-duddy, but man, I don't see how people do it. You don't get anything. At the end of my life, I'm not going to get a prize. I've seen some pretty cool stuff. I've been to Fenway Park, been to the Indianapolis 500. I've been to uh, Notre Dame Stadium. I've been I've been to a lot of cool places. Um, but in the end, I'm, you know, they're cool experiences. Once in a lifetime kind of a thing. But to live my life around it, I just, I don't know. I guess if to your thing, some people say, oh, it's a family bonding experience. Okay. Um, again, I watched lots of sports growing up, but I really don't watch that much anymore. That's probably why my kids aren't real sporty. But my kids are, not, I don't know, this is because of my wife, not me. My kids are into reading and kind of book nerds, and I encourage it because I wish I would have been more of a, a nerd and embraced it. I was already a nerd, a dork, as you can probably tell, but, you know, it doesn't do you a lot of good unless you embrace it. So I, I encourage my kid, embrace your nerddom. Embrace it. Do well in school, read books. That'll that'll make you a successful person. The fact that I went to Fenway Park or the Indianapolis 500 or Notre Dame Stadium, any of those things, and then in my life, no one cares. Yeah, I did it, but big deal. I don't get a prize. I goes, ooh, you went to a historic place. Well, okay, okay, here's a bonus. No one cares. They're fun things, but again, my issue is just when people live their life around Sports or a sports team. So that's my two cents. That probably annoys a lot of people, but whatever. Again, these are my quirks. Okay, I think I'll end on this last quirk. Speaking of book nerds, I like to read. And I will read some fiction. But generally speaking, 
I don't like fiction. I like biography or history. Because the thing that bothers me in fiction are plot devices that make things convenient. You know, like, oh, and there's this, you know, hole that I noticed in the wall that gets you to escape the room when you need to, or basically those kind of plot devices, you know what I'm talking about? Things that's just like, oh, that was convenient. Well, yeah, they just made it up to, for the story. And I don't know, those things, is, they drive me crazy. Uh, not crazy, but it's just, I don't enjoy those stories so much. So I like fact. I like nonfiction. Uh, that's just me. Again, I'm saying these because I have a lot of weird quirks that almost everyone else looks at me like, what is your deal, dude? So just saying quirky guy. And that's not even, those are just some basic off the top of my head. I have a lot of weird quirks. So anyway, it makes me who I am. So thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. What quirks do you have? What are quirks that people look at you and go, what? That's weird. Or maybe I'm the only one with weird quirks. Anyway, if you have a weird quirk, you want to let me know. Let me know at DeWigamaniac, D-W-I-G-A-M-A-N-I-A-C at gmail.com. Let me know what your quirks are. If I ever get any viewer mail or email, I'll read it out and uh, discuss. But uh, again, I'm going to keep trying to improve. I'm going to keep trying to get better. And until next time, thanks for listening, everybody. And so long, everybody.